All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, long day, long week. I would say happy Thanksgiving, but quite honestly, I uh, have decided uh, that I shouldn't be celebrating a holiday such as this. Uh, my family and I give thanks on a daily basis, and really today represents the genocide of people that actually cared about our land. So enough about that. I want to welcome everybody to the first show of The Voice of Humanity. I want to give a big shout out and love to Jules, who's working overtime and uh, just tirelessly to keep this uh, station to build it to uh, bring new new hosts and uh, to promote it she's just working overtime and if I were closer I'd give her a big kiss I thought the first show should be all about me for the reasoning that we live online and nothing is real or maybe everything is real and before you put yourself out there to ask me for help you have to have some level of trust and, and you're only going to have that level of trust if you know exactly who I am. So um, normally I don't really do much about me, but I thought this would be a nice way to kick it off, uh, give everybody that's listening the chance to uh, put me on the spot and ask some questions. Uh, just when you do that, be ready to get the truth as I see it, um, because that's all I have for you. Um, I think truth is the greatest form of love, and I won't sugarcoat anything, and I won't hide anything to save your feelings. So feel free, ask anything you want, jump in at any time. You can... Uh, Hit the call number, which is 718-717-8926. Now, feel free to give me a call and uh, put me on the spot. In the meantime, uh, born in 1970, grew up in uh, rural New Hampshire in the uh, White Mountain Valley, uh, close to Mount Washington, about an hour south. And uh, my dad left, actually, when my mom was pregnant. He was traumatized by the Vietnam War. And um, came back drug addicted and left. Uh, but I had a solid father figure from the time I was three months old on. My stepfather, Rocky, who's just a, a wonderful man, a very hard worker, um, but no skill, low skill, no high school diploma or college education. He grew up in a very poor family and had to quit school to support his grandmother and the rest of his family when he was young. But he always worked, uh, always showed us a lot of love, and always took the time to teach us uh, the things that he knew. Um, so it was a nice, solid foundation. And I did have some interaction with my real dad as life went on, uh, probably from six years old on, maybe every year or every other year I'd hear from him. So he wasn't a big influence. And when he did start to influence my life, he thought he knew it all and he was better than anybody. And so I never really liked him, uh, unfortunately. So, uh, life goes on. I, uh, mid twenties, I met the mother of my children, fell in love with her, although she was a lot younger than me, 10 years, uh, younger, but she was just a great human being, uh, my best friend. And she wanted nothing more out of life than to have children and be the mother that her mother wasn't. So, we started uh, having kids after we had been together for almost two years, came up with three beautiful sons. Uh, now, she had been severely abused as a child sexually, also in a cult-like situation. There were ties to the Branch Davidian. Some of you may uh, remember that. She was, uh, her family was tied to that. And all those horrible memories came back after our youngest was born, and that turned her into somebody that I can no longer recognize, drug addict, et cetera. Um, when I tried to take action against that and protect the children, she had me arrested, gave the kids up to foster care, and I fought my way through all those charges. That was about eight years ago. Uh, I've been raising the boys single-handedly since then, uh, and that's a blessing. It's exhausting, but it is a blessing uh, just to watch them grow and just to see uh, the different qualities that they have and, and to see how very different each of them are. Uh, you know, it's been a challenge, but again, it's been uh, more of a blessing than I can uh, uh, express with words. So there we are. Uh, Carpenter uh, had a little bit of a marketing background, but um, I was doing carpentry self-employed for over 10 years. And then I started getting the feeling that I needed to learn the computer. And this was the last thing in life that I ever wanted to do. As I saw it, computers were going to be the downfall of humanity and I would have no part of it. 
But when the economy collapsed, I rethought my position and realized that if I was going to raise these boys by myself, I needed to learn how to work out of the home. I, or no matter what I did, I needed to learn the machine. So I bought a laptop and I beat the hell out of it for 20 hours a day. Uh, actually burned it out in six months because evidently you can't leave a laptop on for 18 hours a day uh, for months on end. So anyhow, um, about three months, I guess it was, after I got a computer and started playing with it, I took a Word, uh, Microsoft Word class just to get uh, a, my fingers wet, but I'm not a big school type person. I learn quickly, but I don't need school. I don't want school. So I just took a short six-week class uh, that really helped, uh, not that I can type now, but anyway. Uh, and then we progressed on. I found Twitter, and that's when I started seeing all this bullshit. Um, started off with uh, the Iran election era, uh, and Twitter was booming with the atrocities that are going on there, were going on there in Iran. And I got active because I realized that there were a lot of people there um, that were being slaughtered and had no way to defend themselves. They had no army. So I started digging up information on weapons making, bomb making, self-defense, uh, anything that I could find that I thought would help these people because Twitter was one of the uh, biggest ways that in, any information was coming out of the region, and I thought that I was helping, it, and I think I was. Uh, but, of course, that put me in the spotlight of those that don't want the truth to be told. And so at that point, I was just Kevin Allen. Um, the master of many things was the tagline I used when I was a carpenter because I covered all phases, and my little... Uh, cliche saying was jack of all trades master of many well when i got active on twitter and shared all this information that they don't want you to know somebody hacked my twitter account my blip fm account uh another account that i had and that's when i got pissed off and even though i didn't have a lot of skill i found a way to get my twitter account back but not my Blip FM account. And that's uh, when I decided that Master of Many Things was going to apply to the online world as well. Now, a lot of people will take that name and think that I'm narcissistic or, uh, you know, better than anybody. And that is so far from the truth. Um, and that's really why I want to bring you this show tonight and explain fully who I am. Um, because... I'm not any better than you. Uh, I don't care who you are or how low your position in life is. Uh, I'm I'm right there next to you. Um, I can sit down in the gutter and talk to you uh, when you're at your worst. And, and I can eat at your table with a silver spoon, although I probably will pass up that invitation. Uh, you know, it's just such a wild world we live in. And I'm so thankful that I, I changed my way of thinking. Uh, for a long time, that was my Twitter uh, bio let the changes you make begin with your thinking because unless you change your thought process and start looking at things from another angle, you're never going to change. You're never going to change, and you're going to be deceived, and you're going to be led astray, and um, you, you're not going to really have the life that you should have. Um, and when I say that, I mean there's great joy in what some people consider suffering. Um, I don't consider it suffering at all. I, I've I have just become so awake over the last few years. And you would think a man at 40 years old would be all set with his learning, that he would be in a place that he doesn't really need to learn anything else and that he's comfortable with who he is. And that is, at least for me, so far from the truth. Um, I'm learning every day, and I'm just almost amazed that I still find things that I need to change about myself, and I'm willing to, to do that. Uh, it's just such a crazy world we live in now, and I'm really fighting very hard at least the last couple of years to wake people up to that and um, get them to drop the, the colors and the lines and the, and the racism and the hate and, uh, you know, thinking better of themselves. Uh, so hopefully that has some effect. Okay, so back to Twitter and all that and who I was. When the economy collapsed in 2009, I knew I had to get out of here and to really... Uh, learn 
the internet and the social networking world, I wanted to be around people that knew what a Twitter was. If you come to Conway four or five years ago, Conway, New Hampshire, you would say, hey, I'm on Twitter, follow me. And they'd say, what the hell are you talking about? What the hell is a Twitter? So I needed to uh, submerge myself in people that at least had some type of an understanding of social networking, um, the interwebs, etc. And I hate being cold. I am a flat out bitch when I'm cold. I hate it. It it hurts uh, because of the carpentry and the abuse to my body. And I just so we set our sights on California. We stayed in Massachusetts for six months to earn uh, enough money to get there, and we left. Uh, the boys and I and a good friend of mine. Along the way, our route got changed, and we ended up stopping in Texas, and the boys wanted to see their mother. She lives there. She's now a four-year meth IV addict, um, and we decided to stay for about six months and try to help her get clean, and that was to no avail, and we all hated the entire time in Texas. It, the people were nice, uh, but the environment, uh, the scenery, we, none of us were happy there. So anyway, we left and continued our trip to California. California was a struggle. We ended up there broke, and um, the one resource that I came with was a pretty fancy truck that um, I thought I was going to double my money on when, by selling it when I got to California. When I got there and found out that because of the laws, uh, it was of no value at all. Uh, it would have had to have been restored to original uh, to be registered, and so my little nest egg and my plan went right down the drain. And we spent about six months uh, in a shelter in Santa Maria, California, on the central west coast, which also was a blessing because, uh, you know, it gave my children a, a look at society and that was another part of the reason for going to california people here in the valley or people that come to the valley uh mount washington valley think that this is such a peaceful place in a quiet place in a safe place and it's not it's a deception drugs are running rampant the the kids are forming gangs uh the, the crime rate is you know spiking um from what i see and everybody is a fucking mess and it's also a tourist town, so it's it's very hard to um, live here because you have to have several different trades, and you have to be very flexible in your work. And for some people, that's just not possible to have two or three different things they're good at so that they can stay employed year-round. Anyway, so we're in California, six months at the shelter. We got on our feet. We got our own place in Lompoc, uh, which is about 30 minutes south of Santa Maria, right on the coast. Uh, central coast of California. And so we were happy. Uh, we had a, a, a small place, not in the slums, but uh, what we could afford. So it was next to the slums. And again, that was a good opportunity for my kids to see what the world has really become. Um, everything is trashed. Nobody cares. Everybody's a bitch. And they saw things under my protection, but things that I would not be able to explain to them. I know growing up that when my mother told me to stay away from certain things and to not do this and to not do that, I, as a teenager, knew better. And I did those things anyway without any experience. And uh, it's probably just by the grace of God that I'm alive today for many different reasons, uh, whether it be alcohol and drugs at a young age or, uh, you know, consistently doing over 100 miles an hour whenever I drove my car or a host of other evils. And I knew that if I tried to pound certain things into my kid's head, they would just revolt against it. But yet, if I let them see it for themselves, the foundation that I had laid for them would hold strong, and they would decide that those things weren't for them. And, and so far, that's worked out pretty well. Um, they did pick up a bit of bad language while we were in California, because again, everybody's a bitch, and everybody's a fool, and there's no respect. Um, but that's that's a small thing. Um, they know what the crackhead is like. They know the deceptions. Uh, they've seen what the drugs and alcohol do to people. And I feel real confident that they're going to stay away from those things without me actually telling them. So we're in California. Um, one of my goals was to do a lot of YouTubes. I had learned that you could make money with YouTube. And so I started focusing on YouTube. 
which led me over to uh, another talk radio platform, uh, freedomslips.com, where I called in for two shows and then became a host uh, the second show. And I worked very hard there. I, I saw that they were trying to wake people up, and I felt real comfortable with what they were doing, and I, I went into high gear and worked overtime to uh, try to bring more people to the platform. I was doing many shows, uh, started overnights so that people all around the globe could have a voice and call in. And then Fukushima blew up. And Obama, uh, I think 24 hours afterwards, told the American people that nothing was coming here, which is a blatant lie. And anybody with half a brain understands that when you throw shit into the wind, wherever that wind is blowing, the shit is going to land. Uh, it was very simple for me to see through that. And I wanted to get out of California. I knew my kids weren't safe. I wasn't in the position to leave there. Uh, but my listeners at Freedom Slips uh, donated all the money it took for us to move to Kentucky so that I could be more involved with the station, and I was. I uh, kind of took over the station as far as running it most of the time so that the owner could take a break. And as I got into this, um, I saw that the listeners were being deceived. Um, the cost to keep the station up was being presented uh, and that wasn't the real cost. There were other things hidden that the listeners were paying for that they had no idea of. Um, and so I had to separate myself from that uh, because I saw those people in the, that chat room all the time, every day, sharing information, looking up links for almost every host, uh, and donating their last dollars when they thought the station might go off air. And uh, I was just horrified. But I like talk radio. I like the power that it had uh, because we can reach the entire planet. And so for a short time, I started my own station. Uh, after a couple of months, that just wasn't possible. Uh, financially, I, I couldn't keep it going. And as Jules can tell you, it was an exhausting amount of time, uh, 18 or more hours a day. And so I've been off talk radio until this blessing a few weeks ago of UCY TV, and I'm here now. And I intend to pick up where I left off as far as giving people that need a voice a voice. Uh, I want to take a quick pause right now uh, and a big shout out to One I Am, who has uh, blessed us uh, in the chat room. And uh, One I Am is just a great guy. He is the master debater, as far as I'm concerned. He was one of my listeners at Freedom Slips when I was doing the overnights. And um, I was trying to tell people at that time how versatile Freedom Slips was because as far as I was concerned, we didn't recognize color or uh, races or anything like that. But uh, one I am put me on the spot. He questioned me. Uh, he said, if you're so versatile, how come you don't have a black host? And I threw him the ball and I said, I do. Uh, you're the first one. And he grabbed the ball and he ran. And he, him and his uh, better half, Debbie, were outstanding hosts over there. Um, they since have gone off air. They're focusing on their community in Detroit. But uh, I asked one I am to join us tonight, and he's in the chat room there. So everybody could give him a big shout-out and a hello. He's a, he's a great individual, uh, works very hard on – you know, fighting for his community in Detroit and waking people up and keeping an eye on the political scene and, and all the things that are going on. Uh, just a just a great individual. Um, and a matter of fact, uh, coming up hopefully here in the near future, you'll hear from when I am. Uh, he said that when time allows, he will come on uh, one of my shows and give us a Detroit update. So I'm not sure if he's by the phone now, but if you'd like to call in and uh, fill everybody in, on uh, who he is and, and what Detroit's doing, that would be great. Uh, one, I, you can give us a call if you're available, 718-717-8296. Uh, it would be great to hear from you. And hear from anybody else as well. Um, I don't have a lot of content uh, for you tonight, not a lot of links, uh, not a lot of things, because, again, this is all about me, and I want you to know who I am. I'm nobody. Uh, I'm nobody at all as far as I'm concerned. I'm just like you or anybody else, um, but I've had enough of the bullshit. 
I've had enough of the division. I, I've had enough of the governmental control. I've had enough of the abuse of this earth. I, I see it's crumbling. It's disgusting. Uh, everything is disgusting. When I walk down the street and I see people just throwing their trash on the ground, I want to physically harm them. I, I, I have to do something about it. And I see the division that's caused uh, or created by all sorts of things. Um, and I hate that as well. Uh, if you're on Twitter, uh, I'm going to ask you to follow the op stop the bullshit uh, tag. And I'm going to ask you to interact with that because I started that as a way to stop the division uh, between everybody that's going on here. And uh, folks, I'm sorry, there's something going on here in the house, and I'm going to have to just mute and pause for one second, and I'll be right with you. Okay, sorry about that. Pause, uh, folks. There was an uh, emergency with one of the uh, children in the house. Uh, we share a home right now with some friends of ours in North Conway, and uh, I guess everything is fine. Uh, sorry about the the dead air. We hate to have that. Um, back to what I was saying, I, I started uh, Operation Stop the Bullshit on Twitter, and, and you can use that on your YouTube tags. Use it everywhere, on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, and it's designed to basically bring people closer together and help wake up the sheep uh and when i say sheep i don't mean that derogatory i just am referencing the people that are asleep to the things that are going on and i don't think less of them because uh i'm just very lucky that the fluoride didn't work on me i guess or that somehow um i don't know i don't want to put myself on a pedestal i actually think it's the marijuana use i'm a 26 year marijuana enthusiast and i do be firmly believe um that that does help offset some of these things in our environment like fluoride because i mean i didn't know i've been drinking fluoridated water uh you know since whenever uh pretty much since uh my younger years, six, eight years old, probably, they started fluoridating the water around us here in New Hampshire. And, uh, you know, so I'm just lucky. Uh, that's a blessing that somehow it hasn't um, removed my critical thinking. It has not made me passive. Um, it has helped to piss me off when I understand what fluoride does to people and um, the fact that, uh, you know, Hitler used it. And this country seems to think that it's okay to use that. Uh, so it's just one of the things I'm pissed off about. Um, Operation Stop the Bullshit. Uh, originally, I saw the division that was being created between the quote-unquote anonymous and the other activist. And I said, we have to do something about this because the word anonymous is being twisted and people are not going to interact with people that are anonymous because they're going to think that they're an evil hacker group. Uh, and it goes beyond that. Um, there's so much division. We have to drop the, the borders. We have to drop the lines. We have to drop the colors. We have to drop the religion. We are one people on one planet. And unless we can stop all this division, we are done. And, and quite honestly, I'm not sure that we're not too far gone to do anything about it. But I'm not one to quit either. Um, I'm going to keep going until the world blows up or until uh, they whisk me away under NDAA. Uh, bring a sandwich when you do. Uh, that's all I got to say about that because I won't go quietly and I won't go peacefully. Um, and I, and I want to see more people doing it. And I know it's hard because nobody has time. Uh, both parents are working if there are even both parents in the home. Everybody's working overtime. Everybody's behind on their bills. Everybody's feeling the pain. And they're so overwhelmed that they just sit in front of the television just to get some peace and quiet in their lives and to get outside of their lives. But what that's doing is making their lives worse, and it's making their children's lives worse. And uh, I'm just going to keep talking about it. And if, you know, uh, you'll a lot of times you'll hear me refer to the Bible, and I don't want anybody to twist that and put any label on me other than human being. Okay, I 
do believe a lot of the Bible. I also believe the Bible is twisted beyond recognition. And, uh, but in that book, uh, there are many warnings that we should take. Um, first of all, that the book has been added to and taken from, and that nobody will really know uh, until they're gone, until they, they do meet their maker, God as they understand it. And to me, God is a culmination of everything that is good, everything that is love, everything that is truth. Uh, it could be as simple as a blade of grass. The Bible tells me that. It, it says that God said that he is the beginning, the end, the alpha, the omega, the everything. Um, so if you create a religion around that, then you have actually defiled him, in my opinion. Um, I do believe that Jesus walked the earth. I do believe Jesus was a son of God, like I am a son of God, like you are a son of God or a daughter of God. And he warned us not to pray in his name. He was asked, it says very specifically, how do I pray? He responded, our Father in heaven. Um, the religions are so twisted, I, I can't align with any of them. I don't go to church anymore uh, because I just I see through the bullshit. And maybe I'm out of my mind. You know, maybe I've missed something all, along the way, but I don't think so. Uh, I, I don't think so at all. I think I'm seeing very clearly. Uh, I don't do any hard drugs. I rarely drink alcohol. And when I do smoke marijuana, it's uh, a s small amounts. Overindulgence is no good for anybody and not necessary. Uh, so my mind isn't clouded and filtered. Quite a few years ago, actually, before um, I got full custody of my kids, I knew that I was going to have to fight that custody battle, divorce, and all that stuff. And I needed to know that I was thinking with a clear head. So I actually, on my own behalf, quit smoking for two years to see if my thought process changed, to see if my energy level changed, to see if there was any major change that I could relate to smoking pot because at that point I had been a 16 year smoker and I couldn't honestly ask the question answer the question rather because how do you know you've been smoking 16 years how do you know for sure so I quit for two years uh, my thought process was still the same I still had the same opinion I still had a high level of energy um, the only thing that was missing was that little pause at the end of the day that I enjoyed and my creativeness uh, wasn't quite what it should be or what I wanted it to be. So after two years, I went back to uh, smoking again, and I do on a regular basis. And I don't really care who knows that. Um, I don't really care who knows anything about me because if I can't live and be myself and speak freely, well, then you've got two, two choices. You either kill me or you try to put me in a cage because I'm not, I'm not going there. Fear... I don't have fear, and I know a lot of people will sit back and laugh and say, oh, everybody fears something. I have one fear, that I won't be able to give back as much as I've received while I'm here on this planet. But that is my only fear. Death, injury, I have no fear of that at all because reality is that this life is a training ground. We have this whole universe that is infinite and there's no way that we can fathom it and if someone should take my life because of what I stand for then the game has now been won by me and I am free to continue on into that infinite universe and, and fulfill whatever else it is that's ahead of me I won't be bound by this evil that I'm surrounded by the hate that I'm surrounded by and I'll win so so there is there is no fear um, there is no fear of me being taken away and my children left without somebody to care for them because we've always been provided for. Uh, and again, I'll refer to the, to the Bible. Um, you know, if you have faith, you will be provided for. Your basic needs will be provided for. And they always have been. Not to say we live high on the hog because we certainly don't. Uh, we barely get by. But we're content with what we have. We've never been cold and we've never gone hungry. And so beyond that, what do we really need? I know that uh, that's pretty hard for most people to grasp when, when your kid's bugging you for a new iPhone or, or, you know, the flat screen that just came out is two inches bigger than yours. And so it's really hard for society to grasp that and or for them to believe it. But it's the truth. And uh, 
I guess the only way I can prove that is with time. Uh, I do encourage you all to uh, look at my YouTube channel, look at my Twitter stream, uh, follow me over a period of time before you make any judgments. I also want to touch base today on my avatar, which I have done a couple of times publicly, but I feel it's important enough to do it again. You goddamn sheep that think every eye that was ever drawn is endorsed or created by the Illuminati. You're out of your fucking minds. Cut the bullshit. The eye that you see, my avatar, is the angry eye that sees the injustice of the earth. That is why it is red. Inside of that eye, if you look closely, you will see the uh, emblem for the certified truth seekers. I was asked to incorporate that on my website or wherever I felt like it, and I felt like putting it in my avatar. I was honored to uh, be asked to use that, and it is what I seek. Uh, it's the only thing that is important to me, uh, is the absolute truth. Now, a lot of those truths are scary, uh, but what else is there? What, what else is worth fighting for? What, what other form of love is there other than the truth? So uh, I have no ties to the Illuminati, uh, although on several occasions uh, certain members of elite groups have reached out to me and uh, asked me to side with them, and they were told to go fuck their hand. Um, again, I won't take a label. I won't take a label. I'm a human being from the planet Earth, and that's all I hope to be while I'm here. Um, that's all I will subscribe to. That's all I will admit to. I'm nothing more or less than what you are. And uh, again, I don't expect anybody from this one show to believe that, but I'm sure the archives will be available if you want to revisit it. Uh, if you want to, you know, test me on that, or if there's a question that you have that maybe I haven't answered, feel free to give us a call, 718-717-8296. Lines are open. Um, I'll answer any question. Again, uh, don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid to get my immediate response uh, because, uh, again, I, I don't like to sugarcoat things. Uh, what is this show here for? This, is, this show is here for the little guy or gal. Um, the injustices that I keep seeing, you know, when gardeners or farmers are being tormented by the local law, uh, they don't. They need a voice. The show is here for that. Coming up next week, uh, my first guest is an activist out of Kentucky. You can find her on YouTube, Weeping Willow 2. Her name is Carol, and she is an injured worker, um, severely injured, bound by a wheelchair. She's been fighting for over 12 years to inform people in Kentucky uh, and help them with the legalities, try to wake them up to what the insurance companies are doing to, to steal and all of those things related to workman's comp. She will be my first guest. She, uh, us, her and several people have reached out to me to have airtime here with me, and she will be the first guest. Uh, as far as other shows beyond that, the schedule is unclear, but if you go to my website, uh, which I will put a link in the chat room for, I do have a page for the talk radio uh the two shows that I do and other shows that are coming up. So let me get the link here for you, if I can find it quickly. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a mess today. Um, there is also a Google calendar there so that you can keep up with the shows that I'm doing. And if you're somebody that needs a voice, you can go ahead and look at that calendar that's on the Live Talk radio page of my website, and you can kind of see when you fit in. Um, now the show is slated for... Thursdays, uh, 7 to 9 p.m., and we're going to adhere to that. Uh, but I also will make myself available in certain situations. Um, I'll take it upon myself to coordinate with UCY TV and Jules to, to bring special shows during other times when the schedule is free to, to accommodate those that, that aren't available on Thursday evenings uh, at this time and have to get their voices heard. Uh, because that's what this show is for. Um, it's for you guys. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's for me in the sense that this is what I feel I'm called to do. And unless I do this, um, I, I don't feel that, uh, you know, there's a lot of self-worth there. Um, so many times people have helped me out, uh, 
members of UCY.TV, uh, in fact, and others, many others, uh, and not just from the United States. Uh, during my move from California to Kentucky, uh, people all over the world uh, had donated. Many countries uh, had people stand up and um, support me in that move so that I could expand the talk radio. And um, it, it was an honor to know that, uh, you know, I can reach all corners of the globe and that people will actually rely on me and help me. It was just a real comforting feeling, and it gave me the hope that maybe, just maybe, we can straighten out this planet before it's self-destruct. Uh, I'm not totally convinced of that, but I am uh, here to continue fighting until, again, either the world crumbles, I die, or things are perfect. And I, I, quite honestly, I don't think anything will ever be perfect here on Earth. I think we've been here before, uh, historically. I think the Earth probably houses life until it reaches a point that, evil is running rampant and then i think it's like a dog with fleas i think it cleans itself and gets rid of the fleas uh and and that's what i see coming and that's quite honestly why i've moved back to new hampshire uh for a season with all the things that we have coming down the pike with the earth changes and the economy um I want to be here where i know where the clean water supplies are and where the hunting grounds are if need be I'm not big on storing away all kinds of shit, food and guns and all this stuff, because you put all that time and effort and money now. Make some preparations. But for me, I'm more of the guy that can change minute to minute if need be. And as long as I'm in an area where I know where to get the food, uh, where I can grow it, where I can get water, I'm okay. I don't need to prepare beyond that. I need to have the mindset that in any moment I may have to live like we lived 100 years ago. And quite honestly, I hope that happens. People need a reality check. Uh, we, we've gone, especially us Americans, and I'm born and raised, and uh, if anybody takes this offensively, then maybe you need to review yourself because we've become lustful, greedy whores, self-righteous bastards. This country, when I grew up, I saw it as a place where anyone could come, and if they were truthful and hardworking, they could have a good life, and that was a blatant fucking lie. Look at where we are now. Look at it. If you can't without getting pissed off, then you need to get pissed off at yourself. I mean, we all like comfort. That's, that's a human condition. We all like comfort. We all are going to lust. But it's, it's reached uh, maximum overload as far as I can see that your cell phone can't last any more than six months or you've got to have a new one. It's got to be bigger and faster and prettier. and Ah, bullshit. Bullshit. This is what keeps us spinning out of control. These lusts and these greeds are being manipulated to control everything. Uh, the elections even. I mean, come on. We have a president that, that can't even prove he's supposed to be here. He has a laundry list of fucking over 150 lies. And yet people still take part in that. Vote for him because he's the lesser of two evils. You're still voting for fucking evil. You have to just stop participating in it. If you know how vile and disgusting it is, I mean, to each their own. You want to vote, but this is how I see it. We had this system when we started the country. We, we vote in a president and a vice president and blah, blah, blah. And we had to form a corporation because we failed. The system failed. And so we formed a corporation in, what was it, 1871, right? Um, our government is a piece of paper now. So we did that. And then we had the Great Depression, which everybody remembers that. Uh, and now we're here. And whether you know it or not, when you probably don't because they refuse to tell you, we're in another great, even greater depression. Everybody right now owes at least uh, close to $52,000. That includes a baby coming out of the womb right at this very moment. Are you pregnant and you have a child inside of you? Let's figure out if we're at $52,000 now, uh, when you're going to give birth to that baby. Do a little math. How much is that baby going to owe? When he comes out of your womb, think about that. Think about how the hell did we get here? Well, we got here by the process that we have now, this system of voting for a president. It doesn't work, and the sheep don't get it. 
and they just keep arguing and fighting Republican, Democrat, my balls. Okay, it doesn't work. Wake the fuck up. We don't need a, a single person to run this country. We need us all to run this country. We, we need to get off our asses and take care of our neighbors so the government doesn't have to. We, we need to stop drawing the lines in the racism that divides us. I mean, you know, from a white person's point of view, the average uh, white person, I don't care what they say, has a touch of racism until they need a little bit of crack, and then who do they go see? Or until they want to watch basketball, and then who do they root for? You know, we use each other to our own advantage, uh, but then we want to talk about each other as well. Uh, we want to think less of each other. And, and now here we are on the verge of one of the biggest uh, economic collapses this country has ever seen, on the verge of becoming just a one-world government. Uh, and that's, if you don't believe that, then look at the recent uh, threatening letters from the UN uh, to the United States because Washington and Colorado have legalized marijuana. Now that violates international law. You know what? Fuck international law. We're, we're free people, aren't we? You thought you were free, right? Home of the brave, land of the free. Bullshit. You're not free. You're, you're under the control of a world government right now. It's time to stand up, folks. That's why I'm here. Um, that's why I'll continue to be here. And we just got to keep daily uh, trying to wake our neighbors up uh, and trying to help our neighbors. And the more that we take upon ourselves, the less control this government has. Um, it's an illegal regime as far as I'm concerned. It's a big game of cat and mouse. And, and the only winner is the elite. Um, they're going to keep you bouncing back and forth like a fucking tennis ball um, for their own enjoyment. And that, that just can't be. Look at the, uh, you can Google up uh, Occupy movement map, Google. Every major city in the country has, either has or has had or is about to have some type of protest. We have, to date, I believe, close to 900,000 signatures that encourage the states to secede. We're on the the crest of a major civil uprising and only two things are going to happen from here. There's only two possibilities. We either enter into another civil war or the government enacts martial law or both. A and it's coming. I can't buddy from this because we have to rise up as far as I'm concerned. We have to take this country back. What I endorse is giving the power to our governors um, that the governors would fill the seat of the presidency, and no law would be passed that affects the whole nation unless all 50 governors agree. And I think like this because, first of all, it's going to be very hard for 50 people to agree on anything. Okay, we all know that. Therefore, it would be very hard to pass a law that would affect everybody in the nation. Right now, it's very easy. With a little bit of corporate endorsement, you can get anything you want. Uh, if we gave the power to the governors, the governors would have to come home and face their people. A and I think that would return more control to the people. And so that's what I advocate for. Will it happen? No, I don't think anybody's got enough balls. I, I think that you're going to consider the fact that if we actually do this, if we actually rise up and take this country back, that you're going to have to give up your money. You're, you're going to have to give up we know there's going to be a lot of people suffering. The welfare checks won't go out. We're going to have to take the responsibility to care for those people and feed those people. Uh, there is going to be mass casualties. Uh, a lot of people going hungry, cold. But what is the choice now? What is the choice? We have 35 million people, I think, right now homeless in this country. We also have 65 million homes that are vacant. So... The crying is already here, folks. The collapse is already here. It's only going to get worse. Do you, do you think really one person is going to rise up and make all that go away? Do, do you really think that one government is going to fix all this? This is a human problem. It's a you and I problem. When, when you go down the street and you, you see somebody 
uh, sitting on the park bench uh, or wherever with a sign, we'll work for food. Do, do you stop and talk to them? Do you, do you help them or do you look down on them and assume they're there because they drink all the time? You, you can't do that. Now, I don't endorse just throwing your money away to anybody with a sign either. But when you see people like that, you could go and buy them a meal and bring it back to them. You, you could look at your neighbor and say, hey, man, you could use a new pair of shoes. Let me get that for you this time. And if we could just get to that point, this illegal government that we had would have so much less control over us. They would have no control at all, in fact, because we wouldn't need somebody to care for us. We'd be doing it for ourselves. Do I think that people will do that? No. Because if they would do that, then they would have done that. And, and I, I see just so much bad coming down the pike. And I don't want to be negative, but again, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything for you. I'm going to tell you the way I see it, and hopefully it sparks a fire under your ass or, or awakens at least one of your eyes so that you can see something from a little bit different point of view and make a little bit of a change. That effect will go on and on and on. If I can get you a little bit more awake, you can get a few more other people a little more awake, and then maybe finally one day we'll get to a place where our skies aren't being sprayed with toxic chemicals, that we don't have such a lust for power that we're willing to compromise and uh, use nuclear power, which, by the way, 75% of the nuclear reactors in this country have been leaking for over 10 years. How safe do you feel now? You've got to start doing your own research, folks. You've got to start getting away from uh, these puppets that they put in place like Alex Jones. And yes, I know a lot of you love Alex Jones, and, and a lot of you think that he does so much to wake people up. But this is what I've found. I really enjoyed Alex Jones, too, for the first month. And then the reality came that he really was only reiterating the stuff we already know or could find if we got off our asses and did a little research. But because of the psychological manipulation that he puts in place through his talk and his videos, he leaves you right inside of another cage where you're not going to go any farther than the Alex Jones cage where he's going to hand feed you the information that he wants. You're going to rely on him to be the activist instead of you getting your, off your ass to be the activist. And so that's why any time I have an opportunity to call out Alex Jones, I do. And so that's why I have now. And Alex, if you're lis listening, I told you to expect me. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what else is there that we should be talking about tonight? Uh, I'm going to jump in the chat room here. I've been kind of ignoring it uh, and see if there are any questions in there. And I don't see any off the bat. So where do I go from here? Well, uh, it's great. We're going to continue with the talk radio. Uh, if things go well, as far as with our country and earth changes and all that, I hope to, uh, in a reasonable amount of time, uh, tentatively by next summer, uh, take this show on the road. It's kind of been a goal of mine um, for the last six months that I would actually go from place to place and be an activist in person. Um, we're seeing all kinds of craziness going on in this country that, that I can't just sit by and watch. Uh, some, for instances, the lady that was threatened with arrest because she had a garden in her front yard. Um, you know, that a lot of people got active online and brought enough attention to that so that it didn't play out like that. She wasn't actually arrested. Um, but still... I think people like that need a voice. That's why the show is here, and this is why I would like to eventually go on the road and in person um, to bring out these injustices, to call these politicians and evil lying bastards uh, in their face. And uh, if you go to my website, you'll actually see that there is a page there, and I'll get you the link for it, that uh, the title of the page is In Your Face and Up Your Ass, because that's exactly what we need to do. And there's not a lot of people willing to do it. Um, I am. And that's what I would like to do. So you can check that page out. Uh, there is a video there that kind of overviews that goal. And now, um, with the help of UCY TV bringing me back on air, I think I can uh, work 
uh, I'm a little closer to that goal. I won't even try to do that until I see uh, what happens. It would be well after the first of the year. Um, I think personally and honestly, we have to hang on to our asses between the economic collapse that's coming, uh, the civil unrest that's already here, and the earth changes, which most activists don't even know about. We're, we're so spun out with all the legalities uh, uh, and financial stuff that's going on, we're not even taking a look at Mother Earth. We're, we're not realizing that animals are dying by the thousands inadvertently. And I, I know there's always a good reason. There was low oxygen in the water. That's why 50 million fish died. So you justify it because there was low oxygen. I, I don't justify it. Um, I don't care. Obviously, there has to be a reason. Maybe it was low oxygen, but 50 million fish dying is not normal. There's some kind of change that's going on. I, I do see people waking up to that um, in small doses, uh, but something has changed here on Earth. Uh, I've, for the last few years, felt sure that when I look at the moon, something about it just doesn't seem the same as when I looked at it when I was a kid. And, and, you know, again, maybe I'm out of my mind. I do leave open that possibility. But there is something going on. Um, the Earth has become very active, and I hope that everybody is, is trying to take some time to take a look at that because especially on the nuclear issue, as the land rips apart and we're seeing fissures and we're seeing sinkholes and we're seeing earthquakes in places that we have never seen them before and we're seeing the magnitude of those earthquakes tick up and tick up and tick up. And I'm not going to be a Terrell 03 and tell you to go find a cave and hide in the fucking Ozarks. No, no, no. I'm not going to play on your fears or none of that, but I'm just going to tell you that you need to have the mindset that in a blink of an eye, you may have to live like it was a hundred years ago, except for the fact that you're going to have to live in this fucking insanity that I see in, in amongst the civilization that has no respect for each other. Anything that you have can be taken instantly. And that's why I don't encourage, uh, people to go excessive on their preparations, uh, because you're going to be a target if you do. Nobody gives a fuck about you, and as soon as things go bad for them, they're going to come take your shit. Uh, I don't endorse either a big stockpile of guns. I do endorse that everybody get one for everybody in their household while they're still available. But as far as stockpiling a bunch of bullets and guns, that's just going to make you look like uh, an eccentric. It's going to get you targeted and probably could get your shit confiscated. But if you do it reasonably so that you have some form of protection, some way to hunt, I do encourage that. Um, a lot of resources you might want to think of in relation to that. Maybe you're not big on firearms. You don't really know how to shoot. You don't feel comfortable with that. Get yourself a high-caliber air rifle. You can still use it to protect yourself in some instances. You can still use it to hunt small game. And quite honestly, you're going to have to do that coming up, folks. Um uh, you know, it's just craziness. Uh, I just got a link here I'm going to share with you guys in the uh, chat room as well. Uh, one of the pages that uh, Jules has on Facebook for some how-tos. I'm going to share that with everybody that's in the chat room. Um, and I'm going to assume that that is a uh, great thing to look at because if you know anything about Jules, she works overtime. Uh, and all this stuff. I, I can't say enough about uh, the work that she's done here at UCY TV. And I mean, come on, it's Thanksgiving Day, and she's taking her time to make sure that I'm on air today to make sure that you guys get uh, a chance to be here and chat in the chat room and, and all the work that, that she just done. It's just incredible. So make sure you go on over to that link uh, that I just popped into the chat room and, and check out Jules' page. And I'm going to do that as well. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, we've got about an hour left here. And uh, I'm not quite sure what else I can tell you about me unless you ask some questions. So I'm going to encourage everybody to uh, give a call, 718-717-8296. If you forgot that or couldn't keep up with it, it is right at the top of the uh, page in the chat room. Uh, feel free to... Uh, 
call in and put me on the spot, ask one of those hard questions, um, you know, or maybe you just want to call in and give a shout out to your part of the country. Uh, that's okay too, because again, this show isn't, uh, for me, it's for you guys and for what you need, uh, when you need a voice, um, some, uh, just something going on. Well, where do you start? Where, where, where do you begin? Uh, I don't know. You, you have to pick up the one thing that clicks with you the most that you can recognize as being unjust. Uh, the one thing you can be most effective with. Now, some people will look at me and, and see I'm all over the place. Uh, I'm trying to wake people up to all kinds of shit. Well, that's because I can. I'm hyper like that. Um, maybe I would be more effective with one thing, but for myself what I see is that when we get so involved with our one cause, we don't have any time to look at the rest of it. And we become blindsided, uh, you know, to all the other shit that's going on. I mean, there's just so much. Uh, I know there's a lot of activists against the chemtrails, and they work day and night uh, on that, trying to wake people up to that. And they have no reality uh, that the in, in economy is, it has already crumbled, folks. They just haven't told you. They're propping it up. But uh, I know that the Fed is soon to be audited. What's going to happen when the books are open? W what's going to happen when you really know and they have no way to hide it from you anymore? What's going to happen then? So, I mean, all these things, when you're focused on one topic, you can't see everything. And not that I'm a hero and that I'm fully seeing everything, but I do try to touch on all kinds of stuff because there's all kinds of stuff going foul. There, there isn't enough people getting off their ass to do it, um, partially because they're overwhelmed with the situation, uh, partially because they fear. I know a lot of people that I talk to... Uh, somehow realize how far it's gone and they freeze up and they they submit and they say, I can't do anything about it anyway, so I'm not going to do anything. Well, that's all fine and dandy, um, except for the fact that if everybody had that attitude, well, everybody did have that attitude, and that's why we're here now, in my opinion. Uh, growing up, I my parents weren't political. Um, they weren't big into the news. We'd watch the evening news, and I would hear my stepfather say, lying bunch of bastards, you can't trust the government. And I never realized why he would say that. Say that. I mean, the government's here for us, right, uh, was my thinking. Um, but then as I got into my teenage years, I had the sixth sense that everything was a lie, and so I did avoid all of it for most of my life. I uh, didn't want to take part in the political system, so I never voted. Um, not able to vote now because I got a felony when I was 19. Yes, I'm a convicted felon at 19. I was drunk and uh, getting ready to move to Florida, actually. My cousin was going to come with me, and he didn't have enough money. So we were still drunk from the night before, hanging out at the local park, and he made the suggestion that he could steal somebody's purse, and that would probably give him enough travel money to come with me to Florida. And as he attempted to do this, uh, at the time I said he chickened out because he stopped himself. Um, hindsight says that he, he smartened up and came out of his drunken slumber just in time before he committed a felony. I, on the other hand, had been partying my ass off for months, and tried to take a lady's purse for him. I was going to give him the money, but irrelevant of that. Uh, somehow, just before I actually completely took the purse away, I woke up, uh, let the purse go, and in my stubbornness, when it all played out, I decided to uh, try to fight the charges, thinking, you know, they can't prove anything, that young, cocky, 19-year-old uh, alcoholic um, and so I got the felony, and that keeps me now from voting, which is fine with me because I would not take part in this system even if I was allowed to. But there you go, another glimpse into me. Um, again, there's nothing about me that I will hide from you, and I want everybody that's listening to fully understand that because we live in this world that 
we can't really trust anything. Most of us have never met in person and maybe never will. And before you share information or before you endorse any person or entity of any kind, you damn well better know who you're endorsing. I found this true. This has been a big lesson to me uh, coming online just, what, four years ago? Four years ago, I didn't know how to turn a computer on or shut one down. Um, maybe it was five years ago, but it wasn't too long ago. I knew nothing. And then as I started learning a few things, um, of course, I kind of thought I, I knew all I needed to know. And uh, it's put me in, in positions where I've automatically shared information that people gave me uh, thinking that, you know, it seemed reasonable, I should share this immediately, and then the information was false. And then what I learned was that we're fully invaded by a program in, uh, run by the government called uh, the Sock Puppet Program. Uh, other people call it uh, Operation Metal Gear. There's actually software that will track you on your social networks, learn you, and interact with you. And what this software learn is that I'm a very reactionary person. I take the ball and I run with it. I don't fucking wait for anything. Well, you've got to slow yourself um, because they learn that about me, and some of these fake accounts would feed me information that they wanted shared that wasn't necessarily true. And it me in a position sometimes that I really felt like a fool and I had to retract the information and I, I had to slow myself down. Um, we we got to be on the lookout for that as well. Um, our social networks have been invaded. Some people think that they were created just to trap us. Um, that may be true. That may not be true. But what I do know is that if it was created to trap us, uh, we can also use that uh, to destroy the enemy, if you will. Um, as in any war, the tools that your enemy have uh, are probably the best tools for you to use. So it's really all in how you use it, as far as I'm concerned. And again, um, I don't, uh, when I take any actions online, I don't hide behind a proxy. I don't hide my phone number. I don't hide my location. I don't hide anything. Uh, part of the reason that I started getting involved uh, with the anonymous movement is I was quite pissed off, actually, that for my children to stand up for what is right in today's world, they would have to put a mask on to be safe. No, sir. Not, no. Not if I'm around. Now, I do endorse uh, being anonymous on, on several levels, but again, don't get that twisted. You cannot define the word. The word itself means without meaning. It is an adjective and must be added to another word to have any definition at all. So don't twist it. Uh, if you do, that just makes you the fool. But I did get uh, active in that movement and try to share their information and interact with parties that are anonymous because I, I do realize that there is a great risk to speak out now. Um, for myself, I will not take on that uh, anonymous... Um, maybe I will sometimes. Um, I guess you'd never really know for sure, would you? But for the most part, I'm going to say that I don't because... I think that until all of us stand up with our faces, with our identity, with our intentions, that we're not going to get anywhere. We're going to just keep getting spun around in circles, and we have no validity. Um, now, when I say that, you know, it's a fine line to walk because some things must be done anonymously to further try to uh, regain some of our freedom. So it's necessary at times in some situations, but I also think that people just need to stand up and show their faces, especially in relation to the government. Uh, we need to be uh, getting together and storming Washington, as far as I'm concerned, and take this country back. Uh, in that, I will take part in without a mask on. I want them to know who I am. I want them to understand that I understand. And I think when more of us can uh, get over that fear that they've put on us, 
that we can do great things. But until then, we're, uh, we're, we're not going to do much until we get off our ass. So, uh, get off your ass, I guess is what I'm saying. Get off your ass and speak. And that is why this show is here. Uh, this is for you guys. Again, I would like everybody to share all of my social network profiles, make everybody that you know aware of my existence, of this show's existence, because a lot of people need a voice, and that's what this show is intended to do, to give people a voice, to build a community for them, to further their cause, to gain support, uh, maybe even to educate them. Maybe they've had an injustice, and they don't know anything about that. Uh, they just know they got screwed by their local government or whatever the case may be. And and we can help them. We, we can put links into the chat room. We can share information. We can show individual humans that they have a support system here. And, and that's what this show is for. This is what this show is dedicated to. Now, in between requests, uh, like I said, I have a few requests. One person has solidified they will be with me next Thursday, and that's Carol. And we're going to talk about... Uh, the evils of workman's comp, and uh, she's going to load you guys up with some resources and ideas and information that will help people all across the country. Although she's in Kentucky, most of what she talks about and what she's learned applies to most states. So that's going to be a great show. It's going to be very informative, and um, I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people because a lot of people are injured on the job. And so that's an honor to have Carol with me here next Thursday. Uh, beyond that, in between um, shows that people have asked for airtime, I will present to you other topics that are dear to me, such as the marijuana issue, uh, the nuclear issue, the chemtrail issue, the uh, anything that I normally do. If you've seen me on YouTube, uh, anything that I normally cover is what I will use in between these shows. And again, um, I haven't got a full firm schedule. I do know what next week's going to be. The Google calendar is available on my website, which I will update as the schedule, uh, kind of forms. But again, this is the first week for me being here with the exception of Monday's hacker news. And that's, uh, just something fun I like to do. And, you know, we have to keep an eye on the cyber world because, uh, it's, this, the hacking and whacking is going on all over the place. We've got our kids online. We don't know what's safe. We're online. We're buying and selling online. Everything's getting torn apart. Everything's getting hacked and whacked. And so, um, and plus, Mondays are all fucked up. So I figured we'd fuck it up just a little bit more. So if you're around on Mondays, make sure you check out that show, uh, The Hacker News. Uh, that's a great show, very informative, and a little bit of fun. We mix it in with some uh, funky music that. Uh, may offend some of you. In fact, uh, we, we did very well with the first show. Um, I think I butt hurt somebody in the first 10 minutes we were on air. So that was outstanding because uh, you know that you've been affected if somebody's been offended. So that was great. Um, but as far as this show, this is dedicated to you guys. Um, and hopefully it encourages more people to stand up and speak. Uh, I will let you know that if you need to come to me and remain anonymous, I will not ever release any of your information. We can get you on air uh, without any identity um, if you want to be able to share links. But again, keep in mind that I am aware of certain programs that are in place, and um, if you're trying to feed me a line of bullshit to uh, you know, spread propaganda to sway public opinion, that's probably not going to work. I mean, you can feel free to try, but it's probably not going to work. So anyway, um, I don't expect too much of that uh, happening anyway. Um, but, uh, you know, stand up and speak. You can send me an email. It's kevin at masterofmanythings.com. Um, kind of give me an idea of what your cause is, what your injustice is. Uh, one of the things, hopefully, in the next few weeks we'll be looking into, um, I've been given some information about killings that are taking place in Ohio. Uh, and the gentleman that's heading that up uh, is just kind of trying to get his ducks in a row uh, before he presents uh, the information. But he has information on a lot of stuff going on in Ohio. Um, and I can read you a bit of what he sent me in a message right here. Um, 
Kevin, if you're the real deal, then start telling your friends that my family and friends are being murdered in Ohio. I'll leave out the name. Uh, I have uncovered a huge cell of corruption in Ohio and wish to expose them for who they are. I have activist friends being murdered by assholes in Ohio who steal tax dollars while trying to force me to participate. I have had numerous attempts on my life for whistleblowing and have been a political prisoner right here in the United States on several occasions over the last five years after they attempted to overdose me with psych meds. Um, so, uh, I can't go beyond that right now, um, in respect to the person that gave me that information. Uh, but sir, uh, I am the real deal and you will have a voice. Uh, once you're ducks in a row, I'd be happy to bring you on and let you, uh, inform us about what's going on in Ohio. Uh, anything that's going on anywhere, there's so much, um, one of the things that I will try to do in the near future, too, is uh, work with the uh, farm-to-consumer people. Um, they were gracious enough to uh, do a show with me on uh, my station when it was up, and those guys are fighting all the time for our farmers' rights. And so hopefully uh, in the coming uh, months or sometime in the future, I will reach out to them and try to schedule them. But first and foremost, this show is dedicated to the simple individual people who have injustices against them. I also have a lady uh, who you'll be hearing from in the near future. Schedule isn't set as of yet, but uh, she evidently was very well off or to be very well off with uh, a trust fund or something that was... Uh, left for her and um, somehow that has all been stolen from her and she's been fighting to right that injustice for a long time uh, at this moment I can't give you a lot more details about her identity or what's going on with her but I'll just give you enough to, to let you know that um, we do have some powerful shows that are going to be coming up in the near future and um, it would be great that if everybody could share uh, this chat room page I'm going to go ahead now also, and uh, get you the fan page uh, for Master of Many Things on Facebook. That's a great way for people, if you're on Facebook, to keep up with uh, what's going on with any of my talk shows. I will post some other news and music in that stream uh, as it comes available. But uh, if you could share that fan page with everybody, it's a nice, easy way for them to keep up to date on the shows that are coming up. Um, and uh, it's a great way to communicate. If there, uh, now, I some of you are going to say, "What are you doing on Facebook? Facebook's a CIA trap." Yes, I understand that it is, but again, I'm not afraid of who hears what I have to say. I did delete my Facebook account last year, uh, a month or so before the intended takedown by the anonymous um, of Facebook, and I had encouraged that. Quite actually, uh, I'd like to see everybody get off Facebook. Uh, it's a vile platform. It's very insecure. Um, there's so much evil lurking there that most people don't even understand. Um, and aside from that, my personal opinion of Mark Zuckerberg, or Zuckerfucker as I like to call him, you can Google that up and you'll find videos I've done, uh, Z-U-K-K-E-R-F-U-K-K-E-R, -K -K -E Zuckerfucker. That is Mark Zuckerberg, and he's a little puke as far as I'm concerned. He stole his uh, the platform from his college buddies. They had all worked on it together. May many of you know the story, but he stole it. Okay, And then he sold it out last year, and maybe you don't know this, to Goldman Sachs. Now, Goldman Sachs is, is a big part of the reason why this country is so far in debt. So if you think I'm on Facebook because I like it, no. I just know for the time being there are many activists there. And if you find my personal Facebook profile, you're probably only going to find uh, maybe four people, five people that I personally know and have met. Um, everybody else is an activist or a source of news. I'm not there to make friends. I'm not there to play fucking Facebook games. I'll remind everybody I do not play Facebook games. Uh, it's one of the most disturbing things. Video games in general are just not my thing. 
uh, to each their own. But as far as I'm concerned, they breed laziness. And it's one of the worst things that could have happened to our children ever was fucking video games. But to each their own. I won't think less of you because you play them. But don't invite me to play them um, because the only games I play are between bed sheets. So keep that in mind. Uh, some other stuff I wanted to touch on tonight. You know, I've been getting a lot of feedback because of this uh, Israel-Hamas situation. And I just got to say, you fucking sheep. All you people that back Israel, oh, God's chosen and blah, 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 my balls, okay? I don't know if any of you know that several times Israel has attacked our interests. I don't know if you know that they're tied to 9-11. I don't know if you know any of that, and I don't really care. You need to do your research, like I said earlier. Uh, before you get mad at me for not standing on the side of Israel because they're quote-unquote God's chosen. This is how I feel about that. When it was written in the Bible that Israel was God's chosen, I believe that that is a certain type of person on a spiritual level. I do not believe that ha that has anything to do with the land mass that exists. And I do not believe that has anything to do with the government uh, that is just a piece of paper like our government. I think it has to do with the type of people that are God's chosen, um, what their true intentions were, what their hearts was. You, you can't convince me that a God would create an entire planet with all these different types of people on it and only choose one of them. I, I think Israel is more of a spiritual being than it is uh, a physical being, and that's my take on it. Do I know for sure? No, because I haven't met God yet. But when I get there, I'm surely going to ask him. And by the time I get there, I think I'll already have the answer. So uh, to any of you that have gotten mad at me because I won't back Israel, well, you know what? I'm bound to piss somebody off. And uh, although I wish I could please you all, I can't stay true to myself or to you if I don't tell you like I see it. And I'm going to tell you like I see it. And Israel is a foul nation. Not that they're less than the United States, because I'm not happy with my government either. Uh, there's a quote that I like in a, a low-key song. Obama Nation is the name of the song. You can look that up and listen to that. It's also in uh, my uh, favorite uh, music playlist on YouTube. You can find it there. But Obama Nation, and the quote is, since 1945, the United States has attempted to overthrow more than 50 foreign governments. And I ask, what fucking right do we have? What right do we have? Who the fuck are we? I mean, really. And like today, uh, Thanksgiving, um, this is the first year we didn't celebrate. Um, and I actually talked to my kids and I was just so proud of them because I wanted to make sure they understood why I wasn't celebrating it. And they said, dad, it's okay. We don't want to celebrate it either. And I asked if they knew what this day really represented. And they said, yeah, the killing of thousands of Indians. And I asked if they agreed with that. And they said they didn't. And I was very, very proud of them because that isn't something I force on them. I do inform them, but I allow them to make their own choices. Um, and they had a great day. They had a great day. Uh, they had a lot of fun with their friends. Uh, they were out doing some stuff. You know, we had some time together. Uh, but as far as uh, Thanksgiving, I'm not thankful for this day. I cannot be thankful. The people that had this nation um, before the white man came treated it with respect. Uh, they loved the land. They only took from it what they needed, and the land was perfect because of it. And since the white man took over... Here we are. Uh, all the water's polluted, folks. Uh, the, the soil barely gives life to crops anymore. The, the game that used to be in abundance, the wild animals, uh, are almost gone. And the only thing that was left for uh, the natives to do is what now? They're allowed to build casinos? Really? Uh, uh, I mean, come on. I can't celebrate this day. I can't celebrate this day. Another holiday I do not celebrate is Halloween either. We stopped that quite a few years ago. Uh, I just can't celebrate it. I, I can't endorse uh, kids 
overeating an abundance of sugar and running around celebrating evil spirits. I just think it's the most foolish fucking holiday we've ever created. Um, you know, I do still celebrate Christmas, um, but a, a little differently uh, with some. Uh, me and my children have talks, and it's more to honor um, our creator. Uh, I'll call it God for lack of a better term. Um, it's nonspecific, but it, it's a nice day to uh, reflect on that. Uh, but we do every day. Uh, my kids are encouraged uh, every meal to give thanks. They're reminded every night to say their prayers and to say a prayer for their mom because that's really all we can do for her. And uh, they're they're pretty content with all that. And, and they they don't complain. And it's beyond that that they actually understand. I don't want them to just submit because I say so. I want them to understand why I make these decisions. And if they decide... Uh, as they become adults to think otherwise, well, then that, that'll be their choice. But um, I do like to inform them and, and talk about things that most parents don't talk to their kids about. Uh, if you go on over to my website, I'll grab a link for you, but there is a page that I uh, dedicate to them so that uh, people can see them grow and use some of the things that they do maybe to teach their own kids. Um, there's a video on there. Uh, not quite a year ago, maybe six or eight months ago, they did a video based on uh, the information that they know about Fukushima. Uh, they're well informed of that. They were well informed of Fukushima starting the day it blew up. We were still in California. and um, So they have a lot of information on that. They also uh, have a lot of information on uh, the voting system and the madness that's going on. They also understand that we only came back to this portion of the country because I believe that before the first of the year, we are going to see a combination of things happening um, where we really want to be near hunting grounds and clean water supplies. Uh, between the economic collapse that is imminent, uh, between the civil uprising that is in process, and between the earth changes, this really is a safe place for us in that it's safe because I know the people here and I know how they're going to react because when these things play out, everybody's going to lose their fucking minds. And it's safer for my children to be somewhere where I know how the people are going to react. I already know who I can trust and who I can't. And being out anywhere in the country other than here um, would basically leave us as strangers and there would be, uh, it would be unsafe uh, for them in my opinion. So we came back here for a season. Um, but all of us know full well that this isn't our home. Uh, ultimately we're not quite sure where our home is. Um, you know, I, I've always had the feeling that, that um, my home isn't even on this planet, uh, quite honestly, ultimately. Um, and it was so nice when we were traveling. Uh, you know, we stopped along the way and saw different things and were able to interact with different types of people and different cultures. And like when we stopped uh, in the Grand Canyon for a week, you know, my kids got to walk eight feet away from a herd of elk and spend an hour just... Uh, amazed at their beauty and their size and it just so much of that is gone from the world and my kids really enjoyed it uh, they didn't enjoy the time we stayed in Texas but they did enjoy the fact that they got to see it and now when they're older and they decide to settle uh, they will have an idea of how people are in each section of the country I mean people live so differently uh, in every area that you go to. And, you know, I see so many kids that just, they never get out of their hometown and they never experience things and they, they feel kind of lost, uh, but they don't know anything else. So they stay where they are and they, they basically stay in a box and they don't have experiences that, that are nice to have. You know, it's nice to sit down with somebody that speaks differently than you and have a meal with them. It's, it's nice to eat a meal that is different from what you normally eat. There's just, 
so much in this country. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for my country, the fact that we have such a blend of people here. You know, uh, unless you're an asshole, this country is never boring because there's so many personality types, there's so many colors, there's so many languages, there's so many slangs that, that you can always uh, be active. You can always, you know, fill your mind with something new. But before you get that far, um, you, you have to accept all those other kinds of people and, and stop segregating them. So um, that's one thing I want to, uh, you know, have instilled on my children. And, and they, they make friends with everybody. They don't care who you are, rich, poor, black, white, red, yellow. Uh, they could care less. They, they really they just enjoy all kinds of people just like me. Uh, they hang out with all kinds of people. And matter of fact, they have a tendency to hang out with the people that are less popular, which to me is an honor that my kids would um, focus on those people that uh, are looked down upon. Um, it's just great. You know, uh, as a parent, you if you are a good parent, you question yourself all the time and, and you quite often feel like that you've failed in some way. And if And if you haven't been to that, phase of parenthood, then you're not doing it right, quite honestly, in my opinion. Um, but it's those moments that I, that I see my kids hanging out with the kid that isn't as popular and uh, that I'm very proud, that, that I know that I've done something right. Um, you know, uh, especially I have three boys and I, and I think about, geez, you know, uh, I can either do this world a lot of good or a lot of bad. And a lot of that is going to depend on how I raise those three boys. Um, a while back, they were having a real discipline problem. And uh, some of you may have seen the video where I spike their iPods to a piece of wood. Um, only had a couple people that thought that was an ignorant waste. Most people, uh, you know, endorsed it and liked that. And I did it because... There was a severe uh, series of, of disobediences. Smoking cigarettes was involved and in, uh, taking people's lighters, which is stealing, you know. It's stealing. It's not yours, and you take it without. Uh, so there were all these issues, and they kept going and going. And I don't like to punish my kids. Uh, you know, I, I had taken away all their privileges. They basically didn't leave their rooms for <laughs> a couple of months, uh, with some exceptions. And they just kept going uh, and going and going, and I don't want to keep punishing and punishing and punishing. I want the bullshit to stop. I want you to get back to life, and I want you to enjoy yourself. And I knew the iPods at that time were the greatest thing to them. Now, I didn't buy the iPods for them. They had done trading uh, amongst their friends, and they had earned those themselves. But it was the last straw and I spiked those things to a piece of wood when they came home from school I said you can have your iPods back and I handed them the board with the iPod and they lost their fucking minds they lost their minds they cried for hours but it also stopped the bullshit they turned their behavior around about a week later uh, I bought a riding lawnmower and got a good deal on it and, and basically gave that to them so that they could help with the lawn mowing, and I saw my kids again. They were happy. They were exuberated. They, they just loved it. They had this riding lawn mower that they could ride and use, um, and I knew that it was helping the household because they were doing some of the work that it takes to maintain the household. But to them, it was, it was this greatest gift. And most kids in today's society would say, I don't want that fucking thing. I'm not mowing a lawn. But not my guys. They were happy to have it. They were happy to help. And, and again, that was some reassurance that although I fail in many ways, that, that I had done something right uh, with my kids. So anyway, their, uh, their page is on the website. And, um, you know, you can use some of those videos uh, maybe to encourage your kids to get away from the machine a little, a little more often. Um, there's some videos on there. Uh, each of them have done something that is outside of the box. Joseph using uh, a skill saw, and he was only, uh, what, 12 years old, and some people think I'm out of my mind, but what I think is that my 12-year-old son is properly trained and can operate a skill saw safely. Uh, 
Zachary climbing a tree uh, and limbing it by hand. He's 40 feet up in a tree. Uh, and some people think that's a little risky, but uh, I know that he's been fully trained to do so. Uh, they've been on roofs with me since the age of four, five, and six. Those pictures are also available on the website. And it's important because our kids aren't doing this. They don't have the coordination. They don't have the skills. They don't have the strength. Uh, the fear rules their lives. And, and somehow we've got to teach these kids to, to do these things, to get away from the machine. And, you know, I'm one to talk. I'll, I'll limit the amount of time my kids uh, spend online, but I spend tons of time in front of the computer. Um, and so that was a little difficult to teach them, uh, to let them understand that, um, you know, I don't want them to become addicted to the machine. And I spend a lot of time in front of it because it, it is my way of giving back. And it's the only way that I can get real information. Um, and it takes a lot of time. I don't play games. They don't see me playing games when I'm online. Uh, they don't. They see me with uh, news posts in front of me. They see my Twitter and my Facebook pages open so I can relay that information to other people as it comes available. And they see me spend a lot of time doing just that. Um, it was a little bit of a squabble at first for a while until they fully understood what it was that uh, Dad's doing. And now it's no problem at all. They will ask permission, Hey, Dad, when you're done, may I use the computer? And I'll say, sure. And they, they have uh, as much time as they need in front of the computer. But they're happy to just hear, no, you guys, uh, I'm going to be on it for a while. You need to do something else. Okay. There's no argument about it. Um, how many of you can go to your child right now and tell them that they can't have the computer today? How much of a problem is that going to cause? And if you say, yeah, it would be a problem, you need to get off your ass and do something. You really need to get off your ass and do something because um, – we're losing it. We, the Internet is awesome. It's a double-edged sword, though. I, I think many of you uh, would agree to that, that it's a double-edged sword. We need our kids educated on it. Uh, it's here now. But we can't let it consume them. Um, when they become adults and they decide to be, if they decide to be an activist uh, or somebody that, that uses the computer for their work, that's fine. But while they're children limit how much they do it. Uh, you know, the school systems, uh, your kids can't get away from the computers. The, the, the schools are pushing it down their throats. They're giving their kids computers. Um, and I, th I think that that's not helping us. I, I really think it's not helping us because uh, although we need activists and, and maybe online is the only way to get any information, we, we still need people that actually get outside and do something other than on the computer. We can't all be on the computer. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why I want to take it to the next level as far as the radio shows and go on the road, because that is a nice mix of using the internet for the information and for the activism, but getting out and going and doing it in person, uh, you know, taking the guy by the hand that just got, uh, uh, threatened because he has a garden and storming city hall and getting the local people active on his side. Um, it just pisses me off that it's happened again recently in Orlando. It happened last year. Uh, I want to say it was in Ohio. Maybe it was Illinois. I don't know. I take in too much information sometimes, but the most recent one, uh, it was in Orlando and now Orlando is in my sights because a year ago they were arresting the food, not bombs people for feeding people. That really pissed me off when I saw the video of the cop, and I'm going to call him a pig in this instance, that took the plate of food from the little girl's hand because the person that gave it to the little girl wasn't supposed to feed her that day. Bullshit. And now Orlando this year is attacking a man that has a garden in his front yard and it's not suitable vegetation. What the fuck is more suitable than food that you can eat that isn't GMO? You know, uh, I mean, these, this is ignorance. There's, there's too much injustice in this country for me to long term only bitch about it on the radio. If I continue to only do that sitting here via Skype telling you what you should do, 
I'm no different than Alex Jones. And so that's why I want to take it to the next level. Um, and hopefully once we get through this winter, I want to see what's happening. My thoughts is, is that we're going to really be lucky to even be able to travel in this country. And I do have a responsibility to keep my children safe first and foremost. So that's why I don't intend on going on the road until after the first of the year. Um, we make it till the first of the year. We haven't had any major earth changes. We haven't had a total civil and economic collapse. Then I will start focusing on putting together the pieces to take the show on the road and give you live reports uh, from the road. That, that would just be a blessing. I hope it holds out that long because I really look forward to doing this. It's something my kids are looking forward to do, and I've talked to them extensively about it. Um, we have very little resources, obviously, uh, but I wanted to know uh, what they thought. Should we use all of our resources and stay put? Or should we use whatever resources we can gain between now and then and use them to travel again? And they want to travel. Um, you know, as long as we can come back here uh, now and then to see family, that's all they ask for. They really like to travel. So the whole family is in tune with this. Um, and hopefully that'll, that'll work out, you know. Um, I can't give any exact dates because we're just at the idea process right now, but I'm going to throw it out there. Uh, anybody that is able to help w with the efforts that I'm putting in now um, and long-term efforts, feel free to stop by the website. There is a uh, support me page, which I can go ahead and get the link to. I'll throw that in the chat room. Um, now, over the last year, I've had several people uh, that have helped in small amounts on a regular basis and they had given me feedback that I should set up a subscription type donation and I I stayed away from that cuz really I you know I everybody's got it tough and, and I don't want to be a burden to anybody um but I got enough feedback that I said well you know if people are asking for it um you're a damn fool not to do it because you, I'm not a millionaire I I barely have anything I can't just take and do it all myself or I would I wouldn't ask for a dime if I had uh, money in the bank it would be put to this cause it would I would just do it for free I, w I wouldn't even ask for a donation but since the ripoff by Google uh, some of you may not know about that um, uh, I do have to take donations uh, I just put the uh, link to the support page in, in the chat room for everybody. And now I want to tell you what happened with the Google thing. And it refers back to uh, when I had told you that I was getting, uh, you know, into YouTube and had realized people were making money with YouTube. So I start with YouTube, and, I, and I've got ads on the YouTubes uh, a while ago, and that was great. Um, I also put ads on my website with the Google AdSense account. So I had ads on my website, and I had YouTube. And... The math said that at this point in time today, I would probably be averaging twelve hundred to two thousand dollars a month off YouTube revenue, which would be great because, quite honestly, I, I could live on that alone. Uh, our, our lifestyle is simplistic enough that I could live on that alone, and um, that would be great. So anyway, uh, it was probably six months ago. Somebody, uh, according to Google, committed click fraud on my website, which I did not endorse, um, would not endorse. It's is equal to stealing. The ads are there. If they apply to you, then you visit them, and that's how it should be. It should be natural. Um, but anyway, Google said there was click fraud on my website, which generated $50 that month. But instead of taking the $50 and saying you can't put ads on your website anymore, they took everything. The YouTube was in good standing. No copyright violations, no anything at that point. And I had $450 coming from YouTube. Google took it. Um, I contacted a couple international lawyers because I found out that Google does this on a repeated basis especially to those people that put out videos that the powers that be really don't want you putting out. 
they steal money on a regular basis. And this was a theft. If there was click fraud on my website, which I cannot confirm or deny, I don't know. Only Google has those statistics. How the hell would I know? Um, so we can justify that. Okay, take you $50. We cannot justify stealing the money that was legitimately earned from the YouTube channel. And quite honestly, that was going to be uh, the monies that I use to fund the things that I do. Um, it takes a lot of time to do what I do, the research, and it, and it takes a small amount of money to keep the website up. And any of you that are, are juggling trying to be an activist and working for a living, you know that when you're working full-time, you really can't be that active. So it, it's a struggle. And, um, yeah, Google's a thief. And, and it seems that the attorneys are all candy asses that, that don't want to stand up and fight because uh, both of the international attorneys that I got a hold of um, decided it was in their best interest not to take the case. So uh, where do we go from here? Uh, the information still goes out daily. Uh, I still talk about it, hoping there's that one attorney who has the balls to stand up and take the case. Um, so far, no, but, and I was going to just let it go until I saw that, uh, Google is doing this on a repeated basis to many people, to many people. So, uh, Google, you can expect us as well. I'll keep putting out the information. I'll keep telling people what a thieving whore you are. And hopefully at some point, um, we can take some action against Google and file a class action lawsuit, uh, with anybody that's involved. So. Keep sharing that information as well, or that idea, if you know of people that have been ripped off by Google with similar circumstances, please have them email me. Again, that's Kevin at masterofmanythings.com, and we'll see what we can do uh, here to put all of our situations together and, and take some action. And again, uh, it's going to take an attorney with balls, I'm sure, because Google's big, uh, very big, bigger than our government. Uh, basically, um, probably has more control and more power than most of the world governments, or at least a fair share of uh, the activity. And so it'll take a lot to do it, but that doesn't isn't going to deter me from trying. Uh, we'll keep pushing on, keep letting people know. And, uh, you know, for those of you that are doing YouTube and generating some income, uh, I would walk a straight line as far as your copyright. And I would not, I repeat, I would not link your Google AdSense account to your website as a way to monetize it because it's an easy way for Google to steal all your money. All they have to do is insinuate click fraud on your website and they'll take it all. They'll take it all. So I know a lot of you out there are using YouTube to generate some income and that's great. Uh, we should get paid for our time. It's no different than, uh, you know, the local newspaper getting $2 a piece for the Sunday paper um, and then feeding you full of bullshit. At least we're out here trying to give you some real information. So um, keep doing what you can do, but uh, walk that thin line and be aware that Google will steal from you uh, as soon as they get a chance. And I would hate to see anybody uh, in the position that I was, you know, I was counting on it on $500, uh, being in my account. And I found out the day before it wasn't there that Google was taking it. And that really put me in a bad position where bills had to, uh, slide for a little bit. And I had to find a way to recover from that. And it was a hard hit. I mean, some people can lose $500 and it doesn't mean shit, but to me, $500 uh, was a couple of bills paid and, you know, maybe a hundred bucks to uh, spend on the kids. Uh, and, and so it was, it put me in a bad position. Uh, let's see, we're winding down uh, the show here. We've got uh, just about 10 or 12 minutes to go. And um, I'm, I think I covered everything. And certainly if I haven't, uh, I'll be around every week so that uh, you will get all the information at all. Again, if you have uh, a need for airtime, if you need somebody to speak for you, or you need the opportunity to get on the air here, or you know somebody that does, uh, somebody's had an injustice and, and they're just wondering what to do about it and they don't know where to go, have them shoot me an email, kevin at masterofmanythings.com. 
I'll take the time to do the research for their cause. I'll take time to promote it, to try to gather people in support of them, and we'll get them on. We'll talk about it. We'll open up the phone lines. We'll get callers for them. Or we'll do anything we can to get everybody a voice. Uh, we've got to start somewhere, and this is where I'm starting, uh, right here. And uh, what a blessing uh, it's been uh, to start in here at UCY TV. I, I can't tell you listeners uh, enough about how hard Jules is working and all the rest of the crew to uh, one to get the platform up and always something new she's telling me she's adding and trying to expand and it's just awesome to be here. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. You can expect me to be here for a long time. Um, I see insane Shane saying dead air uh, maybe a glitch in the player. I haven't gotten any word from Jules that uh, anything went down, so uh, hopefully everybody's still hearing okay. Um, and Jules says she hears it. <laughs> That's good. Because uh, I don't have any control of that from here. Jules is uh, at the helm, and she handles it, and uh, probably just a, a glitch in the player or uh, bandwidth issues or something. you know. And as we talk, I noticed this before when I'm on talk radio, weird shit happens when you start touching on sensitive issues so expect that in some of the upcoming shows that uh you know we may have unwanted guests here um and you can expect during certain times for the chat room to get infiltrated by assholes and uh you know don't worry about me kicking you out for your opinion uh but if i see anybody that takes on a personal attack of anyone else um i will ban them from the chat room and if anybody comes with the intentions of distracting the show by spamming the chat room, certainly I would kick you out then. But everybody is free to voice their opinion. Um, again, uh, attacks on an individual person will not be tolerated. Uh, spamming propaganda will not be to tolerated. But, you know, I'm not one to kick people out uh, either, so there's not much worry as far as that. Uh, this is your place, basically. This is... Uh, I do this for you guys, and um, it's an honor to do so. You know, uh, I went through a big part of my life where you just wonder, where the hell am I going? I mean, I live that life of working 80 hours a week and having unlimited credit and all that stuff uh, when I was in my mid-20s, and quite honestly, it burned me out, and it didn't get me anywhere, uh, not at all, and, and it's been a, a metamorphosis ever since to change my life goals and especially once I started having kids I uh, really just started focusing on more wholesome things and, and trying to uh, you know especially in the last few years trying to get active um, I'm not one of those people that can understand that something is wrong and sit by and say well I can't do anything about it um, I may not be able to do anything about it but I'm sure as hell going to try and the only reason that I'm able to do any of it is from uh, the support of you guys uh, on my social networks, my YouTube, and now here on the radio. So it's an honor to uh, serve all you guys. Um, and I hope that to get some good participation so far, uh, again, we have three people that have stood up uh, in emails to me. Um, we do plan on getting them on air next week will be Carol. Uh, otherwise, you can find her on YouTube, Weeping Willow. Uh, I don't think she puts up any videos. She has the account just so that she can watch and comment and whatnot. I don't, she doesn't really do videos herself, but um, you'll hear from Carol next week. Uh, she's fighting to help people with workman's comp and, and disability and all that stuff, and uh, she's asked for some airtime. That's going to be very informative. Uh, other stuff coming up in the near future that's hopefully just going to really start waking people up and, and let people realize that I really am here for you guys. Um, you can see no flashy ads on the website. Nobody's getting rich here. Uh, everybody here at UCY uh, TV is doing this because this is their cause. This is their give back. Um, and, it, and it's just awesome. It's an awesome platform. I'm happy to be here. Um, uh, what else is coming up in the near future? I don't know. I think I've covered about everything. Uh, we are starting to wind down. We've got just a few minutes left. Uh, I want to thank everybody that um, came, and I see there was uh, a few issues with the player here. 
in the last few minutes. Uh, I'm sorry for that inconvenience. Um, I'm pretty sure that this will be archived. Jules usually does a good job at archiving the shows, so if you missed anything, um, and not a lot of important information this time, I just wanted to lay the groundwork. I wanted everybody that could uh, take part with us today to fully understand who I am, what my goals are, where I came from, uh, where I'm going, and I think that's important uh, because in this online world, uh, we don't really know what's true. We, we don't really know what's real. And so I wanted you guys to uh, give, give you some uh, basis uh, to investigate me if you want to really know who I am. And uh, you'll find that, that nothing I do is hidden. Um, there's nothing about me that's hidden, uh, uh, you know. I've been uh, one of the scummiest people on the earth at times of my life a uh, long time ago, but I was. I mean, I just didn't really care about anything other than drinking and drugging in my late teens and early 20s. And I still worked every day, but, I mean, I didn't really give a shit about anything. Um, I did certainly didn't have any time to take up anybody's cause. If I wasn't working, I was finding a way to party, and that's basically what I did with my late teens and uh, early 20s. And then, thankfully enough, uh, when I met my ex-wife and uh, decided it was time to settle down and have kids, I, I gave all that up, and I, I hardly ever drink. Uh, hard drugs aren't an issue, uh, not at all. Don't, don't have any time for that foolishness either. Uh, you know, maybe twice a year I'll have a beer or two at the most, um, and that's, that's about the extent of it. But anyway, um, I guess that's enough about me. You've heard me babble on for uh, close to two hours here. Uh, it's been an honor to kind of bring you guys up to speed on who I am, where I am. Uh, make sure if you're not uh, following me on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook, the links are on the top left of the page there. You can check out my YouTubes. Um, I put stuff out on a regular basis and, uh, you know, just to try to wake people up to what's going on. You'll see me here every Thursday night, uh, same time. You can hear me on Mondays with the Hacker News. That's uh, an informative show and meant to be kind of fun, and it uh, probably will offend some people uh, at times, and that's okay. Uh, because if you get butt hurt that easy, I'm probably not the guy that uh, you want to hang around with. But uh, anyway, um, one more time, I want to throw into the chat room the link uh, to my website for the uh, talk radio page. Because if you are a Google user, you can go over there and use the Google Calendar and add it to yours. And as new shows that I intend to bring to you come available, I will list them on that calendar. So it's a nice way to keep up on the upcoming shows. And another great way to do that is for Facebookers uh, to go ahead and like uh, the fan page that I started. And that's getting a, a real good response. I want to thank everybody for sharing that as well. Obviously, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, don't be deceived, though, with the Twitter. Uh, probably at least half of the tweets you see are set to auto-post. So if you're on Twitter and you see a post by me and you reply to it and I don't reply right away, it's probably because I'm sleeping. Um, it's just Twitter is so fast and I reach so many people that it only makes sense to have that information going out on a regular basis to be able to reach as many people as possible. And once you get to know me a little better, you'll know what the live tweets are and what the auto posts are. Um, but, uh, there's a lot of information that goes out on a regular basis on that Twitter feed. So you can check that out as well, uh, in the upper left hand corner of the uh, chat room here. Uh, the link to the Twitter and my regular Facebook is there and the links for, uh, the fan page that just went into the chat room. So I guess it's that time of the day here, folks. We're going to be winding down uh, any minute now, just waiting for the word in from Jules. We might have a uh, another minute or two. Uh, and certainly, uh, if you have any questions um, that you were too afraid to call in for, you can email me. Uh, email is kevin at masterofmanythings.com. Um, and I check my email several times a day, so you will get a fairly quick response from me. 
uh, going to type this into the uh, chat room real quick. Talk and type. I should have learned that when I was doing debt collecting, but uh, okay. Just got the. We got two minutes, and probably less than that now. I don't know how long that message has been sitting there from Jules. Probably down to about a minute. But uh, anyway, uh, it was an honor to be here with you guys tonight. I want to thank you for your support, especially on a holiday. I know everybody was busy. Uh, everybody's been running exhausted to get ready for this uh, uh, Thanksgiving day. And uh, do yourselves a favor. Uh, boycott Black Friday. You don't be like the masses of sheep that are going to go trample and fight with each other over the newest bullshit at Walmart uh, just a day after they gave thanks for what they have and don't take part in that tomorrow do yourself a favor stay the hell home okay if you are going to go shopping go shopping at a mom and pop store don't shop at the big brand stores don't 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 go there don't go there at all go to the mom and pop stores visit them they need the business it's one of the only ways we're going to bring this country back if we start supporting each other rather than the corporate machine um, which I know money's tight. You're going to use the excuse that you have to shop at Walmart because you can't afford anything else. Well, then you need to review yourself if you think like that because who are you buying the gift for and what do they expect out of you? Um, if they really care, then they're going to appreciate the fact that you bought at a mom-and-pop store and you thought of them and you at the same time did something to uh, turn this economy around. So that's my best advice. To hell with the big box stores. To hell with shopping on Black Friday. We're down to just a few seconds left here. I'm going to leave you with this one thought. And this thought comes from a great human being, Ursula, formerly of DDUH-TV on YouTube. Stop, think, and love. Good night, everybody. All right, I just connected. Cool. Yeah, the, the bumper's playing. I'll tell you what, our server has been getting hit since you did your show Monday night. Do you know that? Tuesday yeah. morning, nobody could get to the server. None of the pages would load. Really? And it's been uh, up and down ever since then. Yeah, look at We just got 96%. We had a denial of service on um, either Tuesday or Wednesday. Is that right? Yeah, and I heard... Uh, Mike Rivero saying today that he's been getting attacked all week too, though. Yeah, they they will, um, and especially as this station grows, you're going to see a lot of that, man, because they hate uh, they hate Truth Networks. They really do all kinds of shit to distract the phone calls, uh, the the DDoS, um, you know, all kinds of shit. I've seen uh, when I was at Freedom Slips. They just it, it's crazy. It's a crazy world. Yeah. It's insane. You know, it really is like a war, you know? It it really is. Um it's disgusting, but it's it's um calling out AJ. Yeah, the whole world is messed. And you know, when we first went on air we got attacked pretty bad. Um the first three weeks or so we couldn't even stay on air 